Hey everybody, welcome to another post collab talk tweet jam, tweet jam takeaways. And I'm here with John White. Hello. Hello, Christian. How are you now? Happy New Year almost. Happy well, yeah, almost happy new year. So yeah, yeah thanks for participating. This has been, you know, traditionally, and I know that Tygraph has been a sponsor of the tweet jams for most of the decade. You've been involved, we were just talking about it since at least that, that I can remember specifically like late 2012, early 2013, which is like a year and a half after we started. You yep. may have been involved since the first couple episodes. Oh, yeah, that, it, it, it's possible. It's possible. I know we started systematically doing it uh, in 2016. Like that is a, is a matter of record, Tigress sponsoring right. the Tweet Jam and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, we were definitely involved with you well before that. Well, this is great. I, what started as, uh, you know, it was has always been our biggest tweet jam of the year. And, mm. and this month, of course, didn't disappoint. We had some great activity. I still need to go back through, um, like Jay Leesk did a summary blog post where cool. he pulled out a bunch of tweets. I'm still going back through the Tidegraph tools out in Power BI, um, which I'll provide the link in the recording as well. But it's link.tidegraph.com, whack, collab talk. Yep. You'll get to all of those. Um and uh, so you can really get in and look at the sentiment analysis around that, as well as in the last tab, which I love, what we've talked about for years until we had it, which was every single tweet that used the hashtag That's during right. that, that time period. Yeah, and uh, you can filter it by event too, right? If you go back, it, that only goes back a certain distance. But uh, but yeah, you can go back and check, compare event over event or yeah. Yeah, no, it's cool stuff to go back. So there's a, if you missed it, of course, you could go back and search on Twitter and, and on the CollabTech hashtag and find tweets from every tweet jam, which is monthly for the last decade. It's all still there. Yeah. However, it's easier to go through the Tigraph tools <laughs> and find yeah. that. So. Well, it's a little, little more, a little more informative. I'll put it that. Yeah, way. I agreed. Well, so this, this topic, the end of year is always like a look back at the year as well as kind of a look forward. So let's jump right in and get some of your thoughts, John. So uh, the first question was, in your opinion, what was the biggest news for Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and Azure this year? Yeah, and I had to answer that in terms, I mean, your question was, what was the biggest news? And certainly yeah. the thing that made the biggest splash had to be Viva. I mean, the the Microsoft, you know, uh, the uh, field has been in, uh, engaged or energized with uh, uh, getting Viva out there in front of people, et cetera. There was a lot of events around, that's all. All the major events um, were talking about Viva. So I'm not sure that it was the biggest or the most important technologically, but it was certainly the biggest news of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, and the only caveat I added to that, my comment was that, you know, we've been talking about Viva for a couple of years now. And so yeah. while it was GA and kind of all the things around it, um, I, and I said, you know, I, I thought the, the 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 stealth news, the bigger news was really around fluid framework and loop only because it's going to evolve and change. Like, I, so I put it like yeah. Viva, Agreed. loop, and mesh as my one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, that gets into that gets into one of the other questions, but uh, fluid certainly, I think, is the most. Im I don't know if it's the most important across the stack, but certainly, if we're talking about the office group, um, I think it's the most important technologically. Yeah, we'll come back to that as well. But so, question number two: Has your outlook on Microsoft technology and/or strategy changed this past year? Why or why not? Why not? So, a little bit of bias here from partners talking yeah, about Yeah, sure. This, but, you know. um, well, and, and technologically, again, I don't think it's changed a bit. I mean, we've bought into the we've bought into the cloud first uh, for quite some time. Uh, you continue to see good progress on that front. I don't have any complaints. I mean, so the fact, honestly, the one thing I didn't write down yesterday is uh, it hasn't really changed, and that's to the good because if it was going to change it probably would have only gone downhill it's pretty much i'm i'm still well sold on the strategy i'm well sold on the technology there's some other aspects um if you get outside of the technology uh and strategy uh, uh, area like for example the community events and all the way all that stuff is handled i i it, it's it's worsened a little bit i think um I think uh, there's a little bit of a cash grab going on. Uh, there's 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 a little over monetization happening at Microsoft, uh, and I think some of that has to do with uh, org structure. 
Yeah, I, I, I think we'll come back to that, too, because yeah. we had a couple of questions about uh, community and then advice for Microsoft. And a, a number of people kind of made similar comments. I made a comment similar to that about, you know, Microsoft and priorities. And, yep. you know, historically, Microsoft has been, you know, like the battling be, uh, you know, business units kind of focus on let's go and create sometimes overlapping or, or conflicting capabilities in that and and i don't know that we're back purely to that but there no. i i think there are some areas where it's like microsoft hey are you not talking to each other are you not aware of what other teams are doing and uh there's some refining that needs to happen there yep. yeah ex exactly i mean i can think of a particular example this is i know and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get into the um I'm not going to get into the teams themselves, but I, I, I can think of one particular example. I know there's a team looking at uh, charging for something um, that will take away from the same spend happening on Azure, just basically because it's in a different team. That's not a consideration. And I, I kind of think it's a dumb call, but you know that's the way it sits. That's the kind of thing from a partner standpoint, and we're at the front line of having to answer those questions for customers that are frustrated and they don't understand why something. And we're like, yeah, we we know this is what we're we're dealing with, and sometimes those get passed along exactly. to customers directly. So, yep. well, the third question, kind of at the, the the heart of of our workspace, but have the introductions of Viva Flow and Mesh altered how you or your customers think about collaboration? Again, I don't think it's had a major impact in the way we we think about uh, collaboration. I know, I mean, over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of customers uh, going whole hog, rolling out just teams, right? You know, they, yeah. and, and, and the whole remote working. So these are, I guess I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call them I on the cake to some degree, but I don't think they've been a fundamental change. I think they are formalizing. That's I think this is what I said yesterday was um, they're, they're kind of formalizing the strategies, the moves, uh, the way we think about collaboration for some time. So yeah, I don't think they're, they're, they're causing a change in thinking. I think they're just realizing it. Yeah, I think Viva really fits well into that category. It's it's more a, it's, again that word refining, refining of the experiences, the mm. and focusing on, you know, we're really now just looking at how are people utilizing the technology and is that the right way? Is it the most effective? Is it the healthiest as far as, you know, well-being of our employees and the way is it a healthy collaboration model? Like it's great to have to to report high efficiency but how long can you maintain that? Do we have a higher level of burnout around that? So having a better understanding of not only, hey, we have a certain number of downloads, we have a certain amount of content that's been uploaded or created, um, and, and hey, we have more people chatting. Those are all important metrics to look at activity, but is it happening in a meaningful way? And are you know, are we seeing higher levels of, of, of burnout? Are, are people truly engaged for the long term that's a it's just a healthier way of looking at collaboration yep it it, it is and another thing I, I i think about viva i think it's a bit of a i don't know if it's a turning point it remains to be seen if we keep going in that direction but it's certainly a shift and it's a shift from i think uh products being focused on features to being focused on functions right as opposed to there's this thing you can do there's this thing you can do uh, there's this, Viva is supposed to be at least, uh, all about here's this experience you can have and these are the things you can get done. And it's less of, much less of a focus on the particular workload or the or the product or the feature itself in, in how it can get done. It's trying to bring together things from all kinds of, you know, basically from Microsoft 365 as a whole to accomplish a goal. And, you know, one thing, uh, an observation too, is Microsoft the last few years has really been hoping that partners would step up and focus on industry specific solutions. Mm. That's always been the case. And there's opportunity for partners, for ISVs, for service companies to go in there and, and, and demonstrate their level of expertise in the education sector, or the manufacturing sector, those, those different industries. Verticals. Um, yeah, the, in the verticals, somebody made or a couple of people made the comment about it was it was one of those ignite announcements around further expansion of the industry, the vertical clouds. 
and investments that Microsoft is making there. But I think that there, if you look at Viva, which is about that employee experience, um, Flow, which is really about, uh, I mean, it's it's more complex than that, but really about, you know, co-editing collaboration, real-time collaboration um, across- You're talking about Loop, platforms. Loop, Loop. Loop, sorry, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah Loop, yep. not Flow, Loop, yeah. Um, loop and and mesh yeah i actually get that wording wrong in the question yeah because it's supposed <laughs> to be viva you know, loop and but yeah, you know what i meant um, yes but you know with that with loop um you know it's still about you know, about collaboration closer collaboration and then yep. mesh is all about um you know opening up just yet another opportunity for different ways that teams can go in there and engage looking back at viva and and loop as in the collaboration continuum, also providing different ways for people to go and connect. Yeah, Mesh, I think, Mesh is, I, you know, uh, some people wrote it off as a toy. Um, I personally think it's not feature rich enough yet. Uh, Microsoft does have a habit of rushing to market with something that's maybe incomplete at first. We'll see. But yeah. I think conceptually, it could bring something very important to the table and that we've we've lost with, with with remote work and i've always been a proponent of remote work you know that but one thing we do lose is the the face to face uh the body language facial expressions etc cetera, etc cetera. if we could get that right virtually um i think that could be a killer i don't think it's there yet. It'll remain to be seen how much it's uh, it's adopted. I mean, the whole walking around legless thing. I mean, that I mean something completely different when I'm walking around. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, well, I, I, my joke when I saw that was that well, it's it's the premium feature where you get to you get pay legs. more to get pants. I know <laughs> it's an add-on, yeah. but, <laughs> but 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 you know, kudos to making the attempt. And 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 this is you know an entry level into this this whole space, and that could be. Very interesting. Uh, obviously, I mean, we've had enough sci-fi out there to show us that, you know, what, what some of the potential, what some of the potential downfalls could be. But I do think it would be nice in, in a remote working environment to be able to collaborate a little bit closer. Well, that's a great segue into question four, which is how has the continued effects of the pandemic impacted your community activities and what are your community plans going forward? Because that, uh, I, I agree with you. I, like we we have not found that happy medium yet i think the in fact it was interesting watching as part of ignite with the mesh announcements how all of the unhappy faces you know the emoticons as people clicking the down the thumbs down it went very negative around that in its defense um i i'd say that when you it, it, one to look at it from our perspective and and it's it's not like we're we have an avatar like 8k experience you know it's not that kind of seamless like is it the real world or is it memorex kind of thing it's uh but even with how naive the graphics are now we're early in this this process when you're in that space and when you've got the goggles on we've got the immersive experience it's incredibly powerful over the mind and how it does allow you to go and you can have a 2d speaker presentation a powerpoint going off and sit and watch that and then i could go over to you we see each other our avatars we could walk off to where it's quieter have a conversation about that have a couple other people join us walk back over watch the rest of that and interact with that other presentation it just opens up new opportunities for community Agreed. I mean, the folks at the uh, European Collab Summit did a, a birthday party for SharePoint in June, I think it was, and they did exactly that. It was uh, it was a bunch of presentations on stage. That your avatar could go up on stage and start speaking about things, and it had you could see it. I mean, you could see that. I mean, the technology kind of failed it at the at the end of the day. I mean, it was a, there was a lot of it was glitchy. It didn't really work well. You didn't get any facial expressions. You, it's hard to tell who was who except for the name floating over their head, right? Right. But I you, you could see the potential of it, and, and so that was and that was you know that was one of the community things that I, I did this year. I, I I will just to answer that question, I um I'm sick and tired of virtual events. I'm I'm just sorry. It's you don't. I mean, you're basically just tossing a presentation. If you're a presenter, you're just tossing a presentation over the wall. Um, 
and and, and there's it's very little feedback. I can speak certainly as a sponsor of some of these virtual events and talk about, you know, one measure is leads. And we've gotten precisely zero leads out of all of the events we sponsored over the last couple of years. So there's no engagement with the audience on that front. There doesn't and I mean, we've we've seen some events at the end of the year this this, this last year that were were quite successful actually. Um, from that standpoint. And as a consumer, you've seen during the course of the pandemic, um, as an attendee, say, of the various Microsoft events, the content shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. As yeah. I'm sure they recognize, you know, the attention span isn't, you know, nobody wants to be sitting in front of the computer for hours on end all the time. But, I mean, the content has suffered tremendously and it's just turned yeah. into a, micro, a, 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 a marketing a yep. marketing exercise of just delivering messages. And I don't need that. That's not what I need right. out of events. So from that standpoint, it's had had a, had a real negative effect. But I mean, we're still trying. We're still doing our best from a community standpoint. We're still communicating and, you know, bright lights at the end of the year. I mean, the last the three weeks in, in December, I spent um, uh, traveling around doing events again. So that was wonderful. Yeah. And I think as that starts to open up, like, look, I, I think from like my, or like our user group, I think it, it's, uh, we decided going forward, we settled on a new model, which is our speakers will always be virtual or if they're there in person, cause we have a location, but it will always be broadcast. It'll always be like, we had already been doing that, but this is like this set model. One of our sponsors, Journey Team has said, we have this dedicated space. We will be, and, and not many people have shown up for this yet, but I think that it will grow over time. <laughs> where it's a viewing party and people that show up get some pizza and things as well. Yeah. Um, but that's it. So you have the option, which is great from a community standpoint. Still, anybody can get involved, um, but that there is a place for us to virtually or in person gather and give people that choice. The hardest part with doing a, uh, a hybrid is keeping the connection between virtual and mm -hmm. in person. And that's also uh, something that I think with uh, uh, like the uh, uh, North America Collab Summit, so Rackley's event out in Branson, Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I think is on the right track is the best that I've seen where we had as much as possible. I helped organize it, but Mark is really the, the gets all the credit for leading it, um, but is the in-person as well as online moderators. Yeah. Yep. So having those moderators so that we make sure that there is constantly both that in-person and online interaction, Q and A. Yeah. Somebody is raising a physical hand to ask a question on behalf of the virtual person. That's right. That that I I think that works really hard, really really well. But don't ever let Mark hear you say something he did was the best you've ever oh, seen. Oh no, he'll and he'll never watch one of these videos. He'll no, that's never, true. That's it true. won't get out. So. <laughs> well, so the next question was, uh, what three features available now or publicly announced? Are having or will have the biggest impact in 2022? Uh, I got to go. Um, I, 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 again, it's the same uh, from a technological standpoint. I think the my answer was uh, we've already talked about it, right? Mesh has got the potential for having the biggest impact. Loop, if it's adopted, like you know, Mesh, we'll see if it's adopted. Loop, if it's widely adopted, because Loop isn't, you know, they're they're pitching it as a product, but I actually think it's. It's a, a feature. It's a piece of that, functionality that goes that into different products. Me. You right? know, it surprised me. Like we've talked about like fluid components and loop, and I was excited about that. But mm -hmm. the whole the canvas, the workspace, that actually sh took me by surprise. Yeah, I think that's going to be confusing, frankly. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but is uh, it another delve? Yeah. Is well, it that's, more that's like an R and D product that yeah. really is until it's integrated within the other existing tools. That is exactly what my concern is. Definitely what my concern is. And, um, you know, as the other, I have to go from my, uh, I, we focus on, on collab talk on, on the collaboration space, obviously, but technologically from Microsoft, the, uh, uh, what I see happening with Synapse now and Synapse and the Power BI integration that's going to be coming is, or that, that has been announced. I mean, the big one for me was Synapse being integrated with Azure Data Explorer. I know I'm out there on an ed, on the edge on, on that one, but, um, but that's going to have a huge impact for me. Well, and a lot of it too is that it, it, going and looking at, and I was talking with Mark Cashman about this a, a, a few weeks back about how, where he did his summary of all the announcements out of Ignite. And I was pointing out, I said, more than half of these items are AI driven. Mm. So the 
the AI footprint across mm-hmm. Microsoft's innova- innovation. I mean, that's going to be a massive, you know, continued impact uh, uh, across uh, 2022. I'd say I agree with you on on Loop. Um, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities. I also made the comment. I said I really thought that 2021 was going to be the year that Microsoft figured out the tasks, the task <laughs> lifecycle across products. So I'm not, I, I'm hoping 2022. It becomes yeah. a big thing. It gets figured yeah. out. Right? You're more of an optimist than I am, I think. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know. Um, all right. So number six, what are your predictions for the Microsoft ecosystem in 2022 and beyond? Uh, I don't remember what I answered yesterday, but I, my, the easy one, I think, is uh, continued growth. Um, they're, they're, they're kicking it in the cloud. I don't know if this is the year where from a, from a pure revenue standpoint, they'll overtake AWS or not, but they're certainly on a trajectory. Um, I, I, I don't see, uh, I don't see any doubt there. Um, that's, that's a big one. I think, uh, we're going to see the full blown return of in-person events in the latter half of this year. So from a community standpoint, I think things are going to get back what that looks like. I don't know. I think we're going to see, you know, uh, as you mentioned, like uh, using Mark's Mark's event as the uh, as North American Cloud Summit as an example. I think they'll be hybrid. Um, I don't think they'll be quite as big as they they used to be. But you know, you got to start back somewhere. Yeah, I I I, I know that Microsoft. Because I've heard this from a number of Microsoft people about how thrilled they are with the 10x, 20x number of registrations and participations for build and inspire and like oh, yeah. like i, I that's get not that real, is it <laughs> no it's not well that's that's the thing like we'd always have like putting on a sharepoint saturday event and we'd be excited that we had 600 people register and sure. then 250 people show up that's which right. was a fa- which is a fantastic turnout by the way that's right yeah yeah, um, yeah but we have an event where we have you know 400 register and 125 show up you know, yeah. kind of thing. So it's it tends to be about a sixty percent drop off mm-hmm. in, in, for those in person meetings. I, I have no idea what that is like, but most people I talk to is like, ah, oh, registers. I ended up not going to any of those sessions. I'll yeah. watch some of the recordings later. But they count as attendees, so. right? And from a Microsoft marketing messaging, back to your yes. point, like that's yes. fantastic for them. Yeah. But then you lose all of the depth, and it's useless for a partner event. It's just, it's, just yeah. it's, it's just useless. Yep. So that Inspire was always my favorite event, which is the annual partner yep. conference. And that's all about and, in-person. And it's all about in-person, the relationships that you build. And it's just, it's flatlined. Yep. That completely, so, that's, a, that's a perfect example. Yep. So number seven question, last question. If you could give one piece of advice to Microsoft leadership and or product teams, what would it be? I don't think it's a new piece of advice, but uh, flatten the org structure, man flatten the org structure. And it comes back to the stuff I was talking about before. I think far too many decisions are being made within, they're not silos anymore. You know, it's one Microsoft, all of that. There has been, you know, improvement in that area. I don't want to take away from the the guns pointed at each other's heads, but there are still too many silos. There's still too many, there are still too many financial decisions that are being made around org units, not as, not for the company as a whole. And until you can start making decisions that cross the entirety of Microsoft, Microsoft's not getting get, uh, getting the most of it. Partners can't get the most of it because they we want to use the whole stack. I mean, the value proposition of the Microsoft product is that they work well together. I mean, I know people would argue that point in some in some areas, but fundamentally, that's that's you know a single identity across the board, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if I have to start making design decisions around, frankly. I want to say a bad word, but I, <laughs> around really bad licensing uh, choices, um, that's taking away from the true value of the platform. And so I, I, I think it would it would behoove Microsoft to flatten their org structure. It would benefit the whole community. It would benefit the partners, and it would benefit Microsoft because I think they're going to make smarter decisions financially. I agree. I, I made the comment of uh, three words. Well, so I said um, flatten. So kind of I was you know, uh, you know echoing your point. A couple other people made a similar comment. I said refine. Um, so it's really kind of uh, refine then the strategy across that and and keeping that end to end, you know, customer end user experience in mind. Mm-hmm. And I think which was a mantra that Satya began his. Yeah. His career with his CEO, um, saying that we're going to look at that end-to-end customer experience in mind, and not just develop point solutions right. within yeah. that. 
And then the third thing uh, is uh, as much as we love innovation and all the new things that are out there, but uh, deliver on the promises already made. Paying your technical yeah. debt. Yeah. So I think that there's a, and there's quite a few things this year. I mean, that's why I kind of put Viva this year into that category of, well, it finally went GA and kind of all the things I said, yeah, but this is stuff we've been talking about for a couple of years now yeah. and finally kind of reaching that point. So I'd like to see more of that. Yeah. Yeah. So get finish something before we move on to the next shiny thing. Yeah. That'd be a nice yeah, idea. Yeah. I, I realize with the innovation cycle and that's not always going to be the case, but uh, to have that in mind to be able to, it's always heartwarming when then you ask questions about, yeah, but what about this that you talked about? And it was like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go find out. We'll come back to you with that. It's like, come That's on. That's right. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. Anyway, look, looking forward to one thing that we didn't mention that I, I think is going to have a really big impact in this, Latin, this, this next year is uh, Teams Connect is this shared channels capability yeah it's a fundamental problem okay let's look True. at it. the number one platform out there that everybody's using it's microsoft teams and yeah the number one problem that i have is multi-tenant and moving yes. between those yeah so if if connect and and you know just to put the background on it, connect is the ability to create a channel and share it with people from outside the organization um and it's different than switching your team's client to someone else's tenant so that you can work. That's what we've done up until now. That holds the promise of eliminating the need for that. If if I truly don't have to tenant switch again, I agree, that's, that's a game changer, certainly in the team space, and teams obviously matters a great deal. Then communication becomes way more pervasive. It's much easier to share things. Um, you know, I've been around, I've been in the business long enough to say, that's a great plan. Let's see how it, let's see how it materializes. So when I see it, I'll, uh, and, and, and work with it. If it truly does deliver on that promise, um, I'll be very impressed. I am a little bit concerned about, you know, the, the processes that we've built up on, uh, until now, will they work without doing that? I imagine yeah, you're gonna work, a lot of people are going to have to make a lot of changes to make this work the way I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning. Yeah. John, I think the way that the phrasing you're looking for is that it, there are opportunities. There are partner for opportunities. Governance tools providers and for consultants to yeah. help with that. It's like, I mean, look, there's a, yeah, like as with anything, you look at something as incredibly powerful as that, that deals with identity, it deals with permissions and authentication. And, and you know, it, it's going to be, there are governance questions that we need to answer about yep. that. So uh, oh, yeah. I'm excited that Microsoft is continuing to go. I, I'm I mean, I was, I've been talking for some time about wanting to start up a, 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 a mobile device, like an emulator on my desktop, where I can interact with the teams uh, from my mobile device has figured out the multi-tenancy, at least from alerting. It's very easy to move yes. between tenants. Why don't I have that in the desktop? Why I always, can I do that on my phone and I can't at, do that within the desktop? Yeah. Outlook has figured that out. OneNote has figured that out. Why couldn't Teams figure that out? The I always will ask that question, but yeah. That's a that's one piece of advice is answer that question, Microsoft. Why? Yep. yep. Why? 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 John, really appreciate your time. Thanks again for your continued sponsorship uh, always of a pleasure. the Flat Talk Tweet Jam. And of course, uh, we'll be back on January 25th. The topic is not announced yet, but that is our... 10th anniversary show or tweet jam so Ooh, that's gonna be cool I, yeah, I think we're gonna do for this where it's like one-on-one -on -one, the post tweet jam we're actually gonna do a panel so that's we're gonna a great do a idea. bit more around it so we'll make yeah. sure we'll have tie graph there i'll probably have yeah. jay on representing ad point i know i'm yeah. representing the you holiday are. edition of but uh yeah, so you'll have to come decked out in Tigraph gear. I'll definitely be doing that. <laughs> make, make it crystal clear. Well, John, hey, happy new year. Thanks for participating, and we'll uh, talk to you in the new year. You know it, sir. Have a good one.